Hi everybody. Okay, we are in the Mazda CX-5 2.5 liter two-wheel drive and we are heading down towards Kuala Lumpur after having done a test run up to Genting Highlands, yeah? Okay, so that was the handling and earlier I asked the question, do you need a turbocharger when you have a 2.5 liter engine? And also, will two-wheel drive hack it? Is there enough power? Okay, so I think I've answered those questions. And if you haven't watched the video, please go and look for the video and watch it. Yeah, but basically, to wrap it up, uh, this particular 2.5 liter SUV uh, has 192 horsepower and 257 newton meters worth of torque. And uh, so the engine, of course, uh, in the Mazda is a Sky Active engine, and Mazda have actually moved out of norm by having this sky active uh, technology in the engine so for starters uh, this is the world's highest compression petrol engine yeah with 14.0 uh, is to one uh, compression so it's very high compression in a normal car the engine would have exploded so higher compression actually allows for better combustion okay it allows for the fuel to burn better and uh, so the Mazda engine is always a little bit more economical than the normal engine okay yeah? so this is a new technology okay with all the hard driving and all we are getting something like a 9.2 kilometers per liter okay so that uh, it translates to about 11 point something liters per 100 kilometers which is not bad considering considering that we are, we are going very fast yeah okay uh, for normal road use if you drive at this regulation speed we're going at about 90 kilometers per hour okay and see even cars are overtaking us we'll go to the left <laughs> so if you drive it drive this CX-5 at this type of speed don't be surprised if we get something like 12 13 kilometers per liter yeah uh, which translates down to about between 8 8.5 liters per 100 kilometers or under normal usage i think you you can expect something like 10 kilometers per liter on an overall basis yeah 9 point something to 10 kilometers per liter and to me that is a very reasonable sum now, uh, turbocharged engines, like uh, norm normally aspirated engines, uh, in fact, all engines, if you push hard, fuel consumption goes up. Lah. That's without a doubt. But uh, for a naturally aspirated engine, the consumption jump upwards lah, uh, will not be as great as that of a turbo. Lah. Okay. So, which means to say that if you select a Mazda CX-5, uh, 2.5 liter, like this one, you are likely to get a very consistent type of fuel consumption. And some people like that. <coughs> now, why else would you choose a car like this? Okay, so this is actually a SUV, right? SUV rides higher. This is a five-seater SUV. And of course, if you wait a while more, they're going to have a seven-seater available okay so SUV is the latest trend everybody in the world wants to have a look at the SUV so there's a big shift huh? in fact uh, Nissan have even stopped the production of the Tiana because uh, the demand for cars like that is declining so they are one of the first to stop and they're going to concentrate more on SUV type vehicles from now on Okay, so uh, it's a worldwide trend and uh, you can see it happening in Malaysia now. Okay, Mercedes have come out with the G series. Okay, and then of course there's the, the Volkswagen Tiguan and then uh, they have the Audis and even Porsche have the Macan. Yeah, and of course they have the bigger one. Yeah, Cayenne. <coughs> so, 
uh, BMW also have their share of SUVs. They have the X1, then they have the uh, X, X3 and X5 and all the Xs, yeah? So, everybody wants an SUV, okay? And uh, the question is, uh, at what cost? Now, at 160 odd thousand, uh, I think it's 161 something for this car. This is actually a very good package, okay? Yeah, it doesn't have all wheel drive, so, but you don't need all wheel drive, uh, you just want the height, okay? You want the extra space if you are big sized. Uh, body like this is very good because you know there's plenty of room, okay? And uh, they, they have a very nice boot at the back. If you need to travel and you need to carry suitcases, okay, you can all dump it at the back. So this is a five-seater with luggage, okay? So in terms of size, it's good. I actually have problems with this um, SUV. Sometimes it looks very big. Sometimes it looks very small. <laughs> Depends on which angle you look at it. But, okay, so if you are confused like me, well, this is roughly in the same size and price as the Honda CRV. Okay, uh, Hyundai also have the the Tucson. Okay, and then they have a larger one called the Santa Fe. Well, the Tucson and this one is about the same. Tucson may be a little bit smaller. Okay, uh, the sizes they they are classified around the same category. Okay, the size may vary a little bit here and there because of the design and all. But generally, you can put them in the same category la. and uh, if you look at the Mercedes this would be around the GLC uh, size okay and this one has a wheelbase of 2.7 meters of 2700 mm so it's a uh, I would call this medium size huh? okay so but at the price of 160 plus, it's a very attractive package. Why? Uh, well, for one thing, Mazda have taken the trouble to do local assembly. So this vehicle is built in Kulim, yeah, at the Inokom plant, where Mazda have their own line, and that's where they, they assemble the Mazda 3 and also the CX-5. Okay. So, because of the assembly, uh, local assembly, it allows Mazda to price this vehicle down to a very, very reasonable level. That doesn't make it a cheap vehicle. Uh, it makes it very affordable. Okay. So, uh, Mazda also have things like rear cross traffic alert, okay, which means if you are reversing out and somebody comes around your backside, you will get a warning. It also has... Um, blind spot monitor and also uh, lane departure and of course this also has GVC okay and also it's got the electronic uh, stability control and uh, also traction control okay a six-speed gearbox which is also a sky active gearbox because uh, the gearbox is a bit unique yeah see the the problem with an automatic gearbox is that you get a lot of transmission slip. Okay, so when when they are accelerating hard, you get the engine moving faster than the gearbox can catch up because there is a torque converter there, yeah? and so it's a fluid coupling. Well, this one also has a torque converter, and it behaves just like a normal uh, automatic box, but. The difference is it has a lockup clutch and it has a lockup clutch in all the gears. And uh, basically, uh, from 8 kilometers per hour onwards, it actually behaves like a manual transmission. It's still an auto, it will change gears and all that. But the moment it changes and all, the lockup clutch will get into action and lock everything up like a manual clutch you know and uh, so there is almost zero slip in this transmission so that's why it feels so good and it feels so positive okay there's another thing about the 
about all masters that I think I should let you know. Uh, master believe in this thing called Jinba Itai, okay? And uh, Jinba Itai is actually a Japanese term. Uh, I don't know exactly what it means, what it is, it is, but this is what I've been told. Uh, it's about uh, the horse and rider being as one. See, in the old days when samurais were having to fight for a living, yeah? And they also have bows and arrows. And they have to ride a horse and shoot arrows at the same time. The horse goes up and down. So in order to for the samurai to shoot the arrow well, he has to practice Jimba Itai, okay? To be as one with the horse. So he has to cater for the up and down movement when he's trying to shoot his arrow. Okay, so that's called Jinba Itai and uh, Master have uh, adopted that and they have their own form of Jinba Itai in the car which they built in like for example they have a special accelerator pedal they use the organ type which is from the floor up because they say this gives you better control and you can actually control the throttle very much more accurately than you can if you had the other hanging pedal so that's what they say and yes i don't argue with that and if you look at all the master cars the <coughs> steering and the seat are centered okay so you sit just behind the steering wheel and in the center so you will be able to feel the car better yeah and of course uh, all the Mazda vehicles uh, from the Mazda 2 onwards they have uh, telescopic adjustment and uh, height adjustment for the steering wheel so that's how seriously they take uh, Jinba Itai because they believe that in order to enjoy your driving you also have to uh, sit properly and in order to sit properly you must have these type of adjustments so the seat adjustments are very are there of course you can adjust your seat for height you can adjust your seat for forward back and also the rig and also don't forget the headrest yeah <clears throat> so when Mazda build the car they they are very serious about this driving feel because it's also part of the zoom zoom experience which I talked about earlier and as I said earlier the the design team and the development team in Mazda uh, the, the average age is very low, you know, very, very young people and uh, they are very passionate about driving. So that rubs off into the cars they make, yeah? How they make the seats, how they hold you like this one does. It's very nice, okay? Uh, it just gives you good support and all those things. Instrumentation, so you see Mazda always have analog, analog meters. Okay, everything is within reach so they talk about uh, ergonomics and all that so they really take a lot of effort okay, to make a good car for you so the result is one of this is one of the results lah. so as a value proposition because it's CKD uh, the CX-5 makes a very good car okay and in terms of size it's just about right not too big not too small it can be whatever you want it to be yeah and so and uh, in terms of the engine first class 2.5 liter direct injection 192 horsepower and uh, 257 newton meters of torque six speed gearbox do i need more speeds no not really six speeds is more than enough so the gear has been shifting up and down and all that and it has always been seamless, yeah. So there's no issues. Six speed is more than enough, yeah. So uh, in terms of ride, fantastic. In terms of grip, very good. This is 19 inch wheels, yeah. So just now when we were driving on on the Genting Road, it was just a bit of body roll, and you feel a bit uncomfortable because of the height, yeah. We're sitting higher. But it didn't mean that the car was any less stable, yeah? You could still go through the corners. Maybe the Mazda 6, having the same engine as this, and being lower, 
maybe the Mazda 6 can go around a little bit faster lah, okay? but this one is also pretty good so the only disadvantage is the height but then all SUVs are like that okay so given a choice would I buy this car yeah definitely it would be under consideration because uh, why price okay value and features all right we're now reaching the bottom of the hill and um, I suppose I've talked long enough all right so um, till we meet again thank you very much for being with us please stay with us and don't forget to share and if you like our videos please subscribe or press the bell you know and we'll see you in the next video thanks bye